let's try to with them. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So, the new off-road DIY boat mechanically is completed. The motor is on, the trucks are on, everything is ready, 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 ready. Even the custom-made carbon fiber, real carbon fiber deck is now complete. Now to the fun part of it is all the electronics. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. So what do you need as a minimum to complete any DIY electric skateboard electronics wise? Parts and tools. Let's take a look guys and if you're interested you can follow my recipe and hopefully we have ourselves an awesome fast and reliable DIY board. So guys what you see in front of you are the parts that you will need to complete electronics on any DIY electric skateboard. Batteries. I'm going for LiPo batteries in this instance. Full review of these batteries available on my channel. You will need the VESC or the controller, speed controller for your board. In my instance this will be the Dual 6.6 Plus by Flipsky. You will also need a switching mechanism. Because this is a Plus it comes with it already pre-built and is as simple as plugging it and turn it on and off. This is quite cool. If you don't want to use something fancy like this, you can buy a separate uh, anti-spark switching um, element, which is like a board with a button. They're quite simple, quite large, about $50. It's up to you. Well, you will also require some cables. Because I'm going to run my board at 65 amp per motor, I've decided to go for 10 gauge silicone high temperature uh, cables. You will also need series connectors. Because I'm going to use two LiPo batteries, I decided not to fiddle around with making one, which you can do if you want. I just bought an adapter straight away. It's quite cheap. You will also require a remote. It's up to you what you're going to use. I haven't decided yet. I might go for the uh, Inertion uh, X Mini or Mini X, Nano X. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Or for just a uh, simple mini controller, Chinese made, I've used this before, quite reliable, why not? Out of electronics, you will also need, or out of the components I would say, you also need some connectors. Because I'm going to be running 50 volt or 12S, I'm going for XT90s, I've got a bag of connectors here. I do prefer using the uh, anti-spark connectors, those are the ones with that green a uh, line on them because I just don't want something to go bang on me they're not much more expensive so why not to use them so if out of the components really obviously besides the motors that's already installed on my board that's all you're gonna need this interesting little tool here you don't have to have to get it but I want to use it this is the Turnergy watt meter and power analyzer which is rated to 180 amp it's gonna go in line uh, on the cable that will be delivering the power to my board and it's going to be a live constant uh, reading of the amps, voltage and everything else so yeah, it's quite cool, you don't have to but I'm just curious, I want to try it again, these bits here you don't have to but this is the low voltage uh, sound alarms they do plug in onto the uh, balance uh, cable on the LiPo batteries when you're running the board and they will sound really loudly if you're battery would go uh, lower than 3.8 uh, volt which is quite nice out of tools obviously you will need a soldering iron uh, this one here I'm using is 80 watt anything smaller it's gonna be not that good uh, especially if you're, if you're working with XT90 and cables uh, the size of um, 12 or 10 gauge I'd also use the butane uh, soldering iron uh, once in a while they're really nice to uh, uh, solder the straight uh, gold banana or bullet connectors these are required uh, to connect the VESC to the mortise I'll show you guys later in my future videos the best and easiest way to actually solder this on it's quite simple when you uh, follow uh, the procedure uh, quite important obviously to have a good quality balanced charger for your LiPo batteries 
and also to get an adapter that actually fits the battery you're using. The Leap also have got, they got XT90 uh, charging adapter which is quite cool and I bought one of these leads, uh, they're quite cheap, about $4, why not? Again, you don't have to, but this is not my first build and I always find it frustrating when you're trying to solder on the XT90 uh, connectors and they always fall over and you're trying to use like grips or uh, spanners, whatever not, just to hold them in place when you're soldering. So I bought myself one of these handy little tools uh, to keep all the connectors in place. It's quite heavy, so it's intact and doesn't move when you solder. I've got a full review of this tool on my channel, take a look if you're interested. Uh, you will definitely need some uh, heat uh, shrink uh, sleeves. They're quite nice after you finish soldering bits, you can put it over, warm it up and it shrinks over it, making it nice and safe. I mean for soldering I do use um, an acid, a soldering acid is quite good. Uh, it comes in a syringe so it's quite precise application so you don't have to uh, worry about your cables not stuck in together. Uh, quite handy to have an iron cleaning kit. It's quite cheap as well. It's just copper shavings and when your iron is hot you just rub the nose of the uh, soldering iron inside to clean it up. That makes the soldering much much easier. And this is it. Most importantly you need some patience and time and passion to this hobby. So you sit down and do what you gotta do. And I think, uh, man, I do look like a homeless person, don't I? Guys, let's clean up and we'll cover how this electronics actually going to look like when they connect it together. Much better. So, I'm cleaned up and my desk is cleaned up. So let's take a look closely at what you're going to need to complete any electric skateboard on the electronics part of it. In this instance, I'm building custom carbon fiber deck, custom trucks, custom motors, custom everything with a real interesting uh, way I'm going to mount my battery so stick around and definitely subscribe if you want to see it so guys everything starts with two 8000 milliamp Tenergy LiPo batteries 6S each battery so all in total 12S in order to become 12S I'm going through the series adapter which is pre-built right there also on the balance charger cables I will have the uh, low voltage uh, alarms and they are quite loud so if I disconnect it put it back on listen that's the sound you're gonna get if the battery goes below 3.8 volts after that I'm going to connect straight on the series adapter the power analyzer by Turnergy so I can see what's going on from the power analyzer straight into the dual 6.6 .6 plus VESC by Flipsky that already has the switch built in beautiful out of that you've got the cable pre-made that will be the transmitter for your remote from there we're going on to we're going on to the connectors of the power to the motors in order to connect the motors you will have to buy the 5.4 millimeter connectors the banana connectors straight connectors whatever the hell you're gonna call it I've got a little tip how to solder them nicely so if you want to stick around for my future videos you're more than welcome to from there what we've got are the sensors the motor sensors uh, we have to use the adapters because I'm using the street wing motors 6374 uh, they are three and a half thousand watts each at 65 amp 
they do come with the sensor adapters and also the vest comes with the adapters so that's not a problem and these adapters are going to be plugged in here ploink ploink and all of this abracadabra needs to fit into the enclosure that is quite funny shape and I love it that's going to be awesome I am going to fake carbon fiber wrap it so it's going to look nice and will match my deck and that's pretty much it and this is as simple as this is yes it does sound a bit complicated oh you got the vest and all these adapters and everything else guys if you really try for once and you read about it and you do one DIY board and you learn how to program your VESC yes it's going to take a bit of time when you do the first board on the second board is better you learn some bits you become uh, not a pro but you will choose better parts you learn on how to program you learn that some of the connectors are better than others you learn how to uh, solder them together so you have confidence in your own work and after that on the third board or the fourth board you will choose exactly what you need to have for your perfect perfect DIY and this is what I have here this is my fifth build and I think she's gonna be absolutely awesome she's already looking great it's a real carbon fiber deck which I made myself from scratch very proud of it she did survive my jump test if you don't know what I'm talking about trust me you want to take a look at my channel there are some uh, um, very interesting videos uh, regarding the jump test and the safety footwear that needs to be worn every time you jump on your deck jump on your deck anyway guys this is it for this video I really hope that this short step-by-step -step how all of this needs to look like or what parts do you need video helped you and make you to realize that it's not that hard to actually make the DIY skateboard so Next video will be about all of this becoming one piece, all solder up, all connected, batteries charged, and we're going to cover how to set up your VESC using the VESC tool on your PC. Sounds scary, but it's not. So guys, thank you for watching, and all the most important, ride safely.